Mesut Ozil just announced his retirement from football at 34 years of age. He could have been the best midfielder and playmaker ever. If we look at all the big players and their ratio of assists at a young age, none compares to this German magician. However, he never quite became what everyone was expecting him to become. So let's take a look at what really happened with Mesut Ozil. Let's not forget that we're talking about a world champion with Germany and a player that won La Liga and Copa del Rey with Real Madrid. Even at Arsenal, with the Gunners struggling for many years, he still managed to pick up trophies by winning the FA Cup four times. Nevertheless, there is a huge feeling of what could have been when it comes to Mesut Ozil. To fully understand how his career turned out, we have to go back some years. With the talented young boy, son of Turkish immigrants, growing up in Gelsenkirchen, there was no surprise that the Schalke signed him at a young age. Already in 2005, he moved up from youth football in the club, as the club saw that this young boy could become the next big thing in Germany. In a couple of seasons at Schalke, he managed to get a lot of games and was ready for a bigger role in the team. However, contract negotiations with the club didn't go well and he ended up rejecting them and moving on to Werder Bremen in January of 2008. Ozil did great at his new club. In his second season, he had started to play a vital role in Werder Bremen's team, and his team performed great with him in the heart of the attack. Ozil helped his team win the domestic cup in 2009, and they also excelled in Europe, only losing the UEFA Cup final to Shakhtar at the end of the season. There were a lot of eyes on the playmaker already then. The following season, with the departure of playmaker Diego to Juventus, Ozil got an even bigger role in his team's attack. Werder Bremen had another good season, even though it didn't end with any silverware. Ozil, however, crowned the season with 9 goals and 17 assists in 31 league games. When Germany traveled as one of the biggest nations to compete for the World Cup in South Africa, Ozil was set to play in the number 10 role for his country at the world's biggest stage. Ozil delivered. Not only did he start all the games, he also contributed a lot offensively for Germany. The Germans went all the way to the semi-final, losing 1-0 to Spain. They did clinch the bronze medal in the end and Ozil was ready for bigger tasks than Werder Bremen. With the nomination to the FIFA Golden Ball after the World Cup, Ozil had grown out of Germany. Real Madrid came calling with an offer that was too good to reject. Not the first or the last time Real Madrid goes after the best players in the World Cup. Ronaldo in 2002, James Rodriguez in 2014, just to mention a couple of them. But with the signing of Mesut Ozil, based on his international performance might be the best signing they did. When you go to Real Madrid, you have to expect competition to get a piece in the starting 11. With players like Kaka and Angel Di Maria in the team already, Ozil came in with the expectation to start as a backup. However, when Kaka needed to undergo a surgery, Ozil got a great chance to start games regularly in Madrid. And like before, when given the chance to shine, Ozil really delivered. He finished the seasons with 25 La Liga assists, the highest for any player in any major European competition that season. He quickly became a fan favorite and a favorite among the attacking players in Real Madrid. The link between Ozil and Cristiano Ronaldo was especially dangerous for opposing teams. Jose Mourinho followed up by handing Ozil the number 10 shirt the next season, signaling his role in the team. And it was like the marriage between Real Madrid and Ozil was perfect. Ozil finished with the highest number of assists in the league with 17, and Real Madrid won their 32nd La Liga title. Ozil didn't hide his admiration for the club in an interview with German magazine Kicker. I'd like to end my career at Real Madrid. I know it'll be difficult because I have many more years ahead of me and many younger and good players will also be out there, but I want to be part of that future. I know what I'm capable of and I'm convinced. I'll stay at Real Madrid many years. Even though Real Madrid had started to build for future success with the addition of Luka Modric, Ozil still played a key role in the team. Although Los Blancos ended the season without any silverware, Ozil played better than ever. He finished the season with 26 league assists, which no other player came even close to. There was something special about the German playmaker that made him find space where nobody else could. Therefore, the following summer became a shock in the footballing world. Real Madrid suddenly decided to sell Ozil in the summer of 2013. For many, it came out of nowhere. He joined Arsenal in September of 2013 for 42.5 million pounds, and there were a lot of reactions following the transfer. A lot of the Real Madrid players were unhappy with the decision to sell him, especially Cristiano Ronaldo, 
He was the player who best knew my moves in front of the goal. I'm angry about Ozil leaving. The playmaker himself opened up in his first interview after moving to North London. At the weekend, I was certain I would stay at Real Madrid, but afterwards, I realized I did not have the faith from the coaches or the bosses. I'm a player who needs faith, and that is what I have felt from Arsenal, which is why I have joined. Arsenal fans couldn't believe their eyes, and we're sure many of them still remembered the day they signed one of Real Madrid's best players. The Gunners weren't big spenders at the transfer market, so the signing of Ozil was a statement from Arsene Wenger's team. No surprise, Ozil hit the ground running at Arsenal, only needing 11 minutes to get his first assist in debut. The first half of the season was spectacular for the German, while he started to lack some form after Christmas. Nevertheless, the season became a success for Arsenal and Ozil. They won the FA Cup and thereby ended a long trophy drought for the Gunners. Ozil played 40 games, scored 7 goals, and provided 13 assists. Arsenal managed to secure back-to-back -back FA Cup victories the following year, both the third season with a great number of assists and the fourth season with another FA Cup win were successful. During his Arsenal days, Ozil also became world champion with Germany in 2014 in Brazil, a perfect revenge on Spain from the loss in 2010, when the Spaniards didn't make it past the group stage. In 2017, Ozil started his final contract year with some injury problems. When January 2018 came, there was a lot of uncertainty regarding his contract situation. With only six months remaining on his contract, there was a possibility for Ozil to negotiate directly with other clubs. However, before February, he signed a contract extension with Arsenal for three more years at Emirates. It was reported that his salary more than doubled to £350,000 per week, which made him the highest paid player in Arsenal history. Ozil continued to increase his impressive numbers in the Premier League, like the record of providing 50 assists in the shortest amount of time, putting him ahead of Eric Cantona's old record. However, everyone could see that his performances weren't at the same level as before. His involvement in the first team began to falter due to a mix of injuries and lack of form. The 2019 season ended with Arsenal losing the Europa League final to London rivals Chelsea, and Ozil was reported to be one of the players who called out his frustration with manager Unai Emery after the match in the locker room. Over the following summer, Ozil was given extra time off to start off the season after being the victim of an attempted robbery. The season became a disaster for the German. He played some games from September but would eventually play almost nothing for the remainder of the season. It was also reported that he refused to take a voluntary 12.5% pay cut during the pandemic. This left a lot of questions regarding his future in North London. While still under contract before the 2020-21 season, he was left out of Arsenal's 25-man Premier League squad. This left him only available to play for the U23 squad. Ozil commented on this on Twitter by stating that he was deeply disappointed but would continue fighting for his chance. In January 2021, he left for Turkish club Fenerbahce on free transfer after his contract with the Gunners was terminated six months early. This was the conclusion of Ozil's time in England. At his best, there was none better at providing assists. Simple as that. But Arsenal fans saw Ozil's best moments more and more rarely in his last seasons. His time in Turkey was short-spelled, and the impression of his career seemed to be underachieved. He could have been a Real Madrid legend, and even though he played 184 Premier League games for Arsenal, he never really became a legend there either. Helped by his last months, of course. Many ask themselves if we will ever see a player like Mesut Ozil again. Even though he's a Premier League legend, many still prefer Martin Odegaard when they rate Arsenal's midfielders. Arsenal fans and football fans have both made their feelings clear about Odegaard this season. Find out why he's so good in this video next.